This beautiful creature here is Snom. And out of all the new Pokemon released in Sword and Shield, it is by far one of the weakest. It's an ice and a bug type Pokemon, which gives it four very annoying weaknesses. Flying, steel, rock, and fire, having a double weakness to those last two. Its base stats total up to 185, making it the fourth overall weakest Pokemon of all time, behind such incredible Pokemon like Azuril, Caterpie, Pichu, and even Magikarp. Yup, that's right, even Magikarp has better stats than this thing. And naturally, by level up, it only learns two moves. I'm Mike, Pokétips Mike, and today, as requested by the fans who want to torture me, we're gonna see if it's possible to beat Pokémon Sword and Pokémon Shield using only a single Snom. Now for the rules, we're keeping it very simple. Rule number one, once I get Snom, that's the only Pokémon I could use. Rule number two, no Pokémon Camp. This way I won't get any crazy bonuses like surviving a hit that should normally knock me out. And that's about it. Originally I was going to play with no items, but I'm also using a Snom. So if possible, I'm going to try to avoid using them whenever I can. Will I be able to get far in this game without losing my sanity? Well, let's find out. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Now, I know you've probably already heard about Raid before. The game is crazy popular with over 15 million downloads in the last six months. But did you know now you could play Raid on both your mobile phone and also on your PC? That's some pretty cool stuff. And if you haven't heard about Raid yet, you must not watch a lot of YouTube. Raid is an epic dark fantasy turn-based RPG. It has a fully voice storyline, intense boss battles, and you can even do PvP as well. But personally, my favorite part of Raid is the large collection of characters. There are hundreds to collect and personalize like Gaelic and this guy right here, the Grinner. Look at that smile. And the best part? It's free to play. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and if you're a new player, you're gonna get 100,000 silver and one free champion, Hexweaver, who between you and me is a really good champion for new players. All this treasure is gonna be waiting for you at the inbox here. Good luck, and I'll see you there. Thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video, and let's go ahead and start this craziness. We begin the game like normal. We wake up, we go get a starter from Leon, and choose Score Bunny because Snom is unfortunately not a starter. But my adventure doesn't really start until I get the Wishing Star right outside of Professor Magnolia's house. They say if you're lucky enough to get a Wishing Star, any wish you make comes true, so I guess that means I have to wish to beat the game using only a Snom. I really need to reevaluate my wish choices. Anyway, so at this point, I can finally trade Pokemon, and since you normally can't get Snom until very late in the game, I'm gonna have to trade a Snom over from a different game to this game so I could actually attempt this challenge. And it's gonna have to be in an egg as well, because you know that whole traded Pokemon disobey you if you don't have enough badges thing. Now I've got this egg I need to hatch, and I decide there's no better place to hatch this egg than in Sonya's room. So I start running around in circles in her room like any normal person would, and it gets me thinking about what it would be like if she walked in and saw me doing this. No, Sonya, it's okay, I'm just trying to hatch an egg. So I run around as fast as I can and become speed, and I'm able to hatch the egg before she comes back. Let's give a nice warm, or I guess chilly, welcome to Nom the Snom. Now, not only is Nam our partner for the run now, but it's also a pretty special Snom as well. This Snom was bred to have the hidden ability Ice Scales, which basically halves the damage that Snom takes from special moves. This makes Snom's special defense a little bit less terrible, actually, who am I kidding, it's still awful. Now, looking at Snom's moves, it knows the move Powder Snow, which is a decent special attacking Ice move, although it only has 40 base power, and then Struggle Bug, which is a 50 base power special bug attack. Its bonus effect is actually pretty good. When it hits, it's always going to lower your opponent's special attack by one stage. Not awful moves for a level 1 Pokemon, but those are the only moves that Snom learns by leveling up throughout the whole game. Yeah, we're going to need to work on that too. So we leave Magnolia's house, we put away our other Pokemon, and we're ready to take on the world. The only problem is, our Snom is at level 1. I don't really think we're going to be going too far using a level 1 Snom, so obviously we have to do some training. Normally in these solo runs, training up your first Pokemon isn't really that tough. You just go to Route 1, knock out a bunch of stuff, and boom, you're level 20 or something. But since Snom is starting off at level 1, and it's a Snom, life isn't too good to us. 
Rookadee, that super common weak bird, kills us in one hit with Peck. Even Wooloo can be a little too much for us. Luckily though, for us we do have a pretty decent way to get EXP. So in all the newer Pokemon games, whenever you catch a Pokemon, you'll gain EXP for catching it. So I run into a level 4 Wooloo, end up catching it after a few Pokeballs, and it gives me enough XP to level me up to level 6. Now that we're level 6, we can actually fight against the wild Pokemon, although again, it's not very easy. Eventually, through a combination of knocking out wild Pokemon and catching them for the XP, I get myself to level 10. Now from here, we can start progressing in the game, so I go back to town, take the train with Hop, and we end up in the wild area, which is actually a fantastic place for me to be right now. First off, we can hop into max raid battles, and that's a really good way for us to level up, since right here, surprisingly, the NPCs are a lot better than than my Snom at taking out other Pokemon. So I go through a few of those and get enough candies to level me up to level 16. Also at this point, Nom tries to evolve and I unfortunately have to tell it it can't. Poor Snom, all it wants to do is become a beautiful moth but its trainer is a nut. But before I leave the wild area, I'm also trying to go to as many max raid dens as possible and collect as many watts as I can. In the wild area, there are lots of NPCs that'll offer to trade you TRs, which you could use to teach your Pokemon new moves, in exchange for Watts. Now, if the stars align just right, one of the NPCs in the wild area will actually have the TR for Bug Buzz, which is basically the strongest generic Bug-type move there is. And it just so happens, our girl Nom the Snom can actually learn that! It's also the strongest overall move that Snom can learn, so we need to get this at some point, might as well do it early. And after collecting enough watts and changing the day a few times, we get lucky and we're able to trade and get the TR for Bug Buzz and teach it to Nom. So we leave the wild area on top of the world and we head into the next town, Motostoke. Now, Motostoke is where things start to get real. First things first, we gotta go check into a hotel, because after a long day of running around with Snom, I'm pretty tired. But before we could check in, we get ambushed by Team Yell. I've been playing the game for well over a few hours at this point, and this is our first real trainer battle. And surprisingly, despite all the trouble I've went through with Nam so far, Nam actually does really well here. The first Team Yell grunt sends out a Galarian Zigzagoon, which is a dark type, so we really get to test out our new Bug Buzz here, which straight up one-shots the Zigzagoon. Then we fight a few more of them, but they go down just as easily because they use a bunch of low-level Dark-type Pokémon. So now we can finally get our rest, and as soon as we wake up, we have a busy day ahead. Chairman Rose introduces me to the gym leaders I'm gonna have to fight, and this is where I start regretting the challenge because I realize there's gonna be a Fire-type gym leader, which if you're trying to beat the game with only a Snom, is your worst nightmare, but I decide we're not giving up foolishly, and we keep going. As I try to leave the town, Hop challenges me to a battle, and this is where things start to get real. Hop starts off the battle sending out his level 11 Wooloo, and even though it's 5 levels lower than us, everything and its mother is faster than Snom, so it goes first and hits us with a tackle. We're actually able to take it out pretty easily using Bug Buzz. Next up, he sends out a level 12 Rookadee, which goes for a super effective peck and brings me to about half of my health. I go for a super effective Powder Snow on that Rook -a -D, and because we're a Snom, we're not able to take it out even with a super effective move, and it lives with just a sliver of its health. Hop winks at me and tells me something about type matchups, and after that, we find out that we actually froze this thing. The next turn, ya boy Hop for some reason decides it's a good idea to use a potion on his Rook -a -D, which doesn't even bring it back to full health, and we just go for Powder Snow and knock it out. He winks at me again, stop it Hop, you're making me uncomfortable, and then sends out his Grookey and uses Branch Poke on me, again, not the smartest move coming from Hop, we just go for Bug Buzz and we're able to take it out. I really, really wish the rest of the run was this easy. So we run on over to Route 3 and we try to make our way over to the first gym, but before that we run into a trainer, Schoolboy Peter. Now this is usually one of those trainers that you don't even think about, however for me, he is a nightmare. Why is this guy my nightmare? Well, he leads off with the fire and bug type Sizzlipede, which automatically resists all of my moves. On top of that, we have a huge fire weakness. So the first turn, he goes for Wrap. That's okay, I'd rather him do that than a fire type move. I go for Struggle Bug to try to lower his special attack and survive the next turn. We take some Wrap damage and move on to turn 2, where he finally does it, he goes for Ember, and burns me. So I take rap damage, super effective ember damage, and burn damage in one turn. 
And of course, he's faster than me. So the next turn, he tries to eat me, and I lose. I don't know if you've noticed this, but these people right here will literally wave at a building. I don't know if they're expecting it to say hi back, but it's a building. It can't talk to you. Anyway, for round two, I level up to level 19, so I have a little bit more of an advantage over this guy. I'm scared going into the battle, and he starts off with that rap again. I go for Struggle Bug, which I really feel like is what kept me alive an extra turn the last battle, because that special attack drop really does matter. Turn two, this is where everything can go right or wrong for me, and he decides once again to go for rap. Thank you! I go for Bug Buzz, and unfortunately it does not knock it out. But turn three, things work out pretty well for me. He goes for Bite, which doesn't do enough damage, and I go for Bug Buzz and easily knock this thing out. Now, I'm kind of afraid for a second Pokemon, but it turns out it's just a Dottler. Which is pretty cool for us after that first Pokemon, because Dottler is weak to Bug Move, so we easily knock it out. Then, we run through the Galar Mine, easily beat the trainers, and we run into our second rival, Bead. Now, Bead is kind of a jerk, and he talks a lot of smack getting into the battle, but his team is full of Psychic-type Pokémon, which we do pretty well against. Again, Bug Buzz is the MVP in this fight, and all of his Pokémon go down pretty easily. So, we get out of the Galar Mine, doing pretty well, and before we run to Turf Field, we have to make a quick stop on Route 4 and pick up the item Silver Powder. This is actually a really important item for us to get, because it'll boost up our Bug-type attacks and make them do a little bit more damage. And with that, it's finally time for us to take on our first gym. Now, going into this gym, I feel pretty good about it because we really do have a huge type advantage over Milo. All of his Pokemon are weak to both my Bug moves and my Ice-type moves, and we do resist his Grass-type moves, so this gym should be, theoretically, a piece of cake. So we engage in combat with Milo, and turn one, we're not playing around. In these battles, we have the ability to Dynamax, and I am certainly going to use it. So we turn Nom into a giant Snom, and we try going for Max Flutterby, which is an awesome move, because not only does it do a lot of damage, but it also lowers their special attack as well, which kind of gives Nom that bulk that it desperately needs. So once again, we attempt to go for Max Flutterby, and oh my gosh, we're actually faster than something for once, and we easily net a nice KO on that Gossifloor. Then he sends out his second Pokémon, the Eldegoss, and he also decides it's time to Dynamax. Eldegoss is obviously faster than me, so it's gonna go first, and it goes for Max Overgrowth, which again, we resist, and we tank it like a boss. Nam does not care about that damage. We hit him with a Max Flutterby, and at that point, it's pretty much over, because he's gonna do less and less damage each and every turn, and we do just about half of its health. A few Max Flutterbys and a Bug Buzz later, and we have our first Gym Badge. And I can't believe it, we were actually able to beat one Gym in Sword and Shield with Snom without even being overleveled. His last Pokémon was level 20, Nom was level 20. Let me tell you, that's never gonna happen again. So now with our first badge, it's time to head over to the next town, Holbury. But on the way there, we run into quite a few interesting things. First, we run into a Surgeon with some pretty bad posture. He's getting harassed by Team Yell, so I help him out, and then afterward, he gives me a bike. So I hop on my bike, go as fast as I can over the bridge, wind flowing through my hair, and you know what? Hop pops up and takes me off of my bike. And of course, he wants to fight again. Like last time, his Wooloo goes down super easy, but now he has a new Pokemon, Corvusquire. Corvusquire goes for Fury Attack, a move that can hit anywhere from 2 to 5 times, so of course you know it has to hit 5 times. Nam gets off a Powder Snow, which does more than half of its health and damage, but it doesn't get the Freeze, and unfortunately next turn he kills me with Peck. So I train Nam up to level 24, but even that's not enough. I need to get pretty lucky to actually win this fight. After a few attempts, I do get that luck. When Corvusquire comes out this time, it goes for Pluck right away, and I thought this was going to be another lost attempt. But on the second turn, for some reason it decides instead of attacking me, it's going to go for a Leer, and I'm able to knock it out with Powder Snow. Then, like usual, his Grass Starter is super easy for me to take out. Which, between you and me, might be the reason why I chose Score Bunny, so I'd know we'd have a weaker Pokémon. When we arrive at Holbury, we meet Chairman Rose, and he's in his, I guess, vacation outfit? I thought this guy was pretty stylish the first time I saw him in the suit, but this makes me question things. 
Anyway, now it's time to take on the second gym leader, Nessa. Now, Nessa's gym, I was initially terrified for it. I know Nessa's ace Pokemon is Dreadnought, which is part Rock-type, so I thought originally that it had a Rock-type move, but I found that later on it actually doesn't. Still, that does not make this fight easy. Nessa leads things off with her Goldeen, which is surprisingly strong. It's fast, and by the time I'm able to take it out, because of course I can't one-shot it, it hits me with two horde attacks, and I'm at less than half of my full health. Next up, she sends out Arrokuda, and it goes for Aqua Jet, and brings me down to 13 HP. Surprisingly though, I was able to one-shot this thing with Bug Buzz. And last but not least comes out her big, bad Dreadnought. We both go for our Dynamax, and Dreadnought goes for Max Geyser, which actually does not knock me out. However, our Max Flutterby does nothing to this Dreadnought, and next turn it's able to knock us out with a Max Strike. But I'm not giving up that easily, so we go back in there again, this time with our secret weapon. Leveling up 8 more times. Goldeen is still faster than me and is able to get some damage off on me, but now with our new levels, we're able to take it out in one hit with Bug Buzz. Against Arrokuda, I actually decide to do something a little differently and Dynamax right away against it. Since I knew it was going to be faster than me no matter what, I decided to Dynamax here just so I would be able to take whatever it throws at me a little bit better. We knock it out easily, and we go in against Dreadnought with 116 HP, a lot better than the 13 that we had last time. Dreadnought Dynamaxes and goes for Max Strike this time and gets a critical hit! Everything's going well, but it has to crit me. At least for around 50 HP, and we're able to get off a Max Flutterby, which now does more than half. All we need is one more on this Dreadnought, and we take it out. Now for the moment of truth, Dreadnought goes for Max Darkness, and we actually survive with 20 HP. And with that, we're able to just barely get off one more Max Flutterby and take out Gym Leader Nessa. To celebrate my victory against Nessa, Chairman Rose decides to take me out for dinner and gets me seafood, but I don't even like seafood! So I run away from his dinner and actually go back to Route 5 for just a moment because there's a good TM I want to pick up there. Near the bottom of the route, we could find TM31 Attract, which I think is going to be important in the next gym battle because we're going to need all the luck that we can get. Now we go to the Galar Mine number 2, where once again we have to fight Bede, who is so free. However, Worker Francis is not. This is another one of those random trainers that usually is no problem at all, but for me with my Snom, he's really difficult. So Francis sends out a level 21 Carcoal, and my first attempt really does not go well. It is kind of my fault here because I go in this battle underprepared, I was only around half health from the bead battle, because I wasn't expecting anybody to be tough in here, but despite me having 16 levels on this Carcoal, it's faster than me and goes for Smackdown and takes out my Snom. But coming back the second time at full health, he was a little bit easier and I was able to take him out. Now finally, when we get to the end of the mine, I meet the third gym leader, Kabu. He's the gym leader of Motostoke and tells me to go to sleep and get some rest before I fight him. So once again, I go back to the hotel, I'm ready for sleep, but I get interrupted. Every time I just want to go to sleep, but no, somebody's got to battle me. This time it's our third rival, Marnie. She leads off with a level 27 Krogunk, and I'm actually faster than it for once, which is awesome. We go for Powder Snow, get a critical hit, but even that's not enough to take it out. Krogunk goes for Revenge, and brings my health down to nearly about half. I'm able to knock it out though without taking any more damage. Next up comes her Scraggy. It's faster than me and it knows Headbutt, which is annoying because it can flinch us, but luckily we don't get flinched and we're able to fire off a Bug Buzz. We just barely miss out on knocking it out, so it hits us again next turn with another Headbutt, bringing us down to 4 HP. We knock it out and Marnie sends out her final Pokemon, her Ace Morpeko, but since we're only at 4 HP, there's not really much we can do to it. It's able to go for Quick Attack and knock us out. How many times have we lost already? I really feel like every other battle kills me. Now I felt like I could probably beat this battle without training up some more, but I knew I'd have to do it inevitably because of that fire type gym leader coming up, so I went back to the wild area, trained up to level 40, and picked up a few useful items. I spent a lot of time shaking berry trees and picked up quite a few citrus berries, which are really good for healing up my HP, and aka berries, which reduce damage from super effective fire type attacks. And while I was shaking those berry trees, I also got lucky enough to find the leftovers too. 
So on our second attempt using the Citrus Berry in our new levels, I narrowly managed to take a victory over Marnie. Now once again I do a little bit more training because I'm super scared of fighting against Kabu, and we level up Nam the Snom all the way to level 45. I know it seems crazy bringing a level 45 Pokemon to the third gym leader, but you'll see. You'll see. Once we get into his gym, Kabu comes out doing this weird little trot, and we jump into a battle. He leads off with the Ninetales, which is a very, very, very scary Pokemon when you're a Snom. Luckily for me, its moves aren't too powerful, but it can still do a lot of damage. So he starts things off by going for Ember, which immediately uses up my Aka Berry. Because of the berry, we only take 13 damage, which isn't really that bad, but now we don't have an item anymore. I go for Struggle Bug to try and lower his special attack since my berry is done, but it does nothing to that Ninetales. It does so little damage. I switch over to using Bug Buzz while he slowly embers me, and we can see this battle is just not going my way. Kabu has three Pokemon, and I'm almost dead to his first one. We end up eventually knocking out the Ninetales when I get down to 21 HP, but we used up our item, so things really aren't looking good for us. But then he sends out his second Pokemon, Arcanine, which is 10 times scarier than Ninetales, and it's over. There's no way for us to beat this thing. I try going for Attract, but before I can even do anything, Arcanine hits me with Flame Wheel, and I'm dead. So I tried over, and over, and over again, and nothing worked. If we could somehow get past that Ninetales, the Arcanine with its Flame Wheel just destroys us, and I have to make the toughest decision of the whole entire run here. I decide to give in to the items. Because look, for this gym, it's either use items or get yourself all the way up to something crazy like level 90. We're struggling so much with just his first two Pokemon, we haven't even seen the big boss yet. So for this next attempt, I changed my strategy up a little bit. First, I leveled up Nam to about level 50. Then I stocked up on some X items, and finally I gave Nam the leftovers that I was lucky enough to find in the wild area. Going into battle against that Ninetales, I used a lot of X items. I used two X Special Defends, two X Defends, and one X Special Attack, because not only do we struggle actually surviving the hits from this stuff, but we also don't do much damage to it. We have problems everywhere. With the help of items, we're able to take out Ninetales pretty easily because it doesn't really have that strong of an attack set. But that Arcanine, even with our 2x defense up right now, Flame Wheel still does a ridiculous amount of damage. But by using some potions and healing up, we are able to survive and get through the Arcanine. And last but not least, out comes his level 27 Centiscorch. He's gonna go for Gigantamax and become the creature of my nightmares, so of course, I have the Dynamax too. Now for some reason, instead of going for G-Max Centiferno, which would have put me in a lot of trouble, the first turn it decides to go for Max Flutterby. You know, the same move that I use. So I resist it, and it doesn't really do that much damage to me. I go for my own Flutterby here, and wow, I get so lucky, I got a critical hit, which did a pretty decent amount of damage to this Centiscorch. If I did not get the critical hit here, this thing would still have more than half of its health, and we'd be in a lot of trouble right now. Now the next turn, he hits me with it. He goes for G-Max Centiferno, and just look at that damage. Remember, I use 2x special defense, so I'm basically at plus 4 defense right now, and I'm Dynamax, so my HP is doubled. And I'm also at level 50, so I've got 23 levels on him. Despite that, this thing does so much damage to me, that it's extremely scary. I get my Max Flutterby off though, and I am able to take out the Scorch. If I didn't get that lucky critical hit there, even with my usage of items, I think we would have lost this battle. We got so lucky. And just like that, somehow, someway, we managed to get ourselves three gym badges using only a Snom. But we're not quite done yet. We have five more gym badges and the champion the fight before we could truly say that we've beaten the game using just Snom. I originally wanted to put this all in one video, but this video is already 24 minutes long, so putting five more gyms, a champion battle, and all the other stuff in between, yeah, that would be a very, very long video. 
If you guys want to see a part 2 where I attempt the rest of the game, let me know in the comment section. I'll definitely try it, although it's very frustrating because Snom faints pretty easily. If you enjoyed the video and you haven't already, make sure you give it a thumbs up right now, and also, since you made it all the way to the very end, comment below Cinnamon. It'll be nice knowing that people watched all the way to the end and I didn't waste so many hours doing all of this. My friends, thank you so much for watching the video, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be continuing this in a part 2.